Hello Java developers! My name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to build Java microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Let's giddy up! This screencast is based on a blog post that I wrote called Java Microservices with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. And if you scroll down past the beginning, you'll see there's a GitHub repo at Octodev Auth0 Java Microservices Examples and a git clone command. So we're going to start with that. We'll do this in our downloads directories. And once that's done, we'll open it up in IntelliJ and I'm going to open up the Webflux example. And the configuration that we're going to do to make it work with Auth0 will also work with the MVC example. So this readme breaks down how to actually get everything up and running. So the API gateway talks to a backend car microservice that just returns a list of cars. And then the API gateway filters out the cars that aren't cool and returns those as another list. So there's two different APIs in play and we're gonna use OAuth to protect both of them. So with Auth0 CLI, which I already have installed, you can run Auth0 login, authenticate as a user, it'll prompt you for consent for all the things that the CLI can do with your tenant. And then you're all set there. It's all hooked up with your tenant. And also just to show you, I have Java 21 installed. You don't need Java 21 to work with Spring Boot 3.2, which is what I'm using, but you do need 17. So just wanted to show you that I am, you know, using the latest one there. And the first thing I'll do is create OIDC app on Auth0. So go into the uh, Webflux directory here and run Auth0 apps create. And we're gonna call it kick-ass cars microservice for cool cars. Uh, just a regular web app has callback URL that's standard for the Octa Spring Boot starter and the logout URL to log out. And so then we're gonna copy the issuer, the client ID and the client secret and the audience into a .env file. So if you look at the API directory, there's already an example in here. So we can just copy that one, paste it, chop off the .example and the issuer is right up here. and the client ID and the client secret. And then rather than specifying the same issuer twice, we can just go here and do it like that. And now we can start the Eureka server, which is just a basic Spring Boot app with an enable Eureka server on the main class. So go into discovery service, clear that and Gradle boot run. You can also do boot run lowercase, works fine. And then in the car service, we're gonna need the issuer and the audience as well. So copy this one, paste it, and back to here, grab the issuer. And then start up the car service. And then finally, the API gateway. Now we can make sure all apps are running by going to 8761. You can see we have the API gateway in the car service. And then if we were to log in with localhost 8080, It'll take us to Auth0. You can use our credentials here. And if you don't have credentials, you could click the sign up or log in with Google, and that'll work just fine. And now it's returning my name. And so if we looked in the API gateway, that comes from the home controller. Set up the SDK here, and you'll see it's just printing out my full name from the OIDC user object. If we go to slash home, it actually prints it out from 
the car service. So this is the car service right here and it prints out all the claims that are in the JWT. So if we look for the other home controller in the car service, you'll see what that looks like. And so what's happening is in the application.yaml for the API gateway, it is proxying with Spring Cloud Gateway and using a token relay filter to pass the access token down to the car service. And this is how we're mapping that home down to it. And then also in the API gateway, we have a cool car controller, which uses web client and circuit breaker and talks down to that car service to grab that list of cars and filter out the ones that aren't cool. So if we were to go back here and just do cool cars, you can see that it's filtered out the ones that aren't so cool. And the other feature is we could get a access token with print token here. And it'll print that to our console and then we can grab it. And we could set that in a terminal as token equals. And then we'll use HTTP IE to talk to the car service without filtering out any cars. And let's do authorization, bearer token. And you'll see it's got the ones that aren't so cool in there. So it proves that access token, you know, works within the microservices architecture as well as outside of it. And so one of the cool things that's automatically supported by Spring Security is refresh tokens. So to get a refresh token, you have to pass in an offline access scope. So let's modify the API gateway env file to use a different audience, one that expires the access token every 30 seconds. So by default, I think it's an hour or something like that. Um, I don't want to wait an hour. So we're going to create a new audience or a new API in Auth0 that expires a lot quicker. So to make that new property scopes work, we have to modify the application properties in the API gateway. And these are actually read using spring.env that's already configured in the project. So that's why you have one in your .env, you need it in your properties file as well. So here we are, and then we added some debugging to show the access token getting refreshed. And so we need to create an API on Auth0 using Auth0 APIs create. And the name is fast expiring. The identifier is this HTTPS fast expiring API and the token lifetime is 30 seconds. So we'll go ahead and create that. And then we can restart the API gateway. I'll pull this into its own window here. Put that on the right. And then if we were to log in in an incognito window, You'll see when it prompts us for consent, it also has that allow offline access. That's how you know you're getting a refresh token too. So once that happens, it prints the access token to the console and you can see this expires at value here. And we'll use this timestamp converter to put it in our own time. So currently 302.42 expires at 302.57. So we'll wait for that to expire. So now if we refresh, we should get a new access token. And if we look back at our console, you'll see sure enough, this was the last one, right? That expired at 257 and the HTTP post to the token to get a new one. And this one's at 334. So we're getting a new refresh token. Spring Security handles that all for us. Um, as long as it has that refresh token in the beginning, goes and gets a new access token. It's the most secure way of doing things because you want your access token to expire quickly because you can't revoke them. You can revoke refresh tokens. So if you want to learn more, there is a demo script in this same project. It's written in ASCII doctor. So if you have the ASCII doctor plugin, you can see a nice pretty view here and it basically builds everything step by step, shows you how to do it from the very get go and creating all the projects using start.spring.io. 
And also we have a microservices lab if you're looking for something a little more formal. This steps through very similar to the demo script. I created the demo script first and then created the lab from that. And it just steps you through everything with nice concise steps. And uh, you know, looks a little prettier. You don't need the ASCII doctor plugin to make it all work. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned a fair bit. If you want to create it all yourself, go check out the blog post, try the demo script, try the lab. And if you like this screencast, I post a lot of them, or I try to, and I post frequent tutorials on Twitter. You can find me at mrabel. I'm also on LinkedIn at mrabel and on GitHub at mrabel. You can find my whole team at Octodev on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot of good content about identity and full stack applications and microservices. So enjoy, have a great day.